Last Thursday, the FCC voted to kill net neutrality, giving internet service providers like Comcast the ability to slow down websites or to demand payments from them for faster delivery. But what does this ruling on net neutrality actually mean for you both in the short term and the long term? Hey YouTube, how's it going? My name's Jonathan, and in this video, I'm going to be going over everything you should know. So simply put, this new ruling just opens the door for very different consumer experiences on the internet. In the short term, not a whole lot is expected to change. Companies like AT&T and Comcast have actually promised that there will be no significant change in the way people use the internet, at least in the short term, and that definitely makes sense. There's a huge spotlight on these companies right now, and if they made any significant change in charging different websites different prices or throttling different speeds, there would be a huge backlash and more importantly, it would attract lawmakers' attention to actually regulate net neutrality once more. Another really important thing to consider is that a number of legal challenges have just been mounted to net neutrality, and broadband companies are going to want to proceed carefully until these legal challenges are resolved. The ultimate fate of this net neutrality reversal is definitely up in the air right now. A majority of Americans support keeping net neutrality, and that includes majorities of Democrats, Independents, and Republicans. And any of these legal challenges could be decided in different ways. That's why uh, broadband companies are going to want to move cautiously, but in the long term we could start to see some more significant changes if this new ruling is upheld. To give one example, AT&T could start to charge a company like Etsy or Netflix a pretty high price to keep its website loading at a really fast pace on the internet when some of the spotlight has died down, and if it did that, it would make it really, really hard for smaller startups to compete against larger, more traditional companies, especially when it comes to like social networking, like Facebook and Twitter would have a massive advantage over any new social network that was just being born. In the past, some internet service providers have actually blocked certain websites completely, such as in 2012, when AT&T completely blocked Apple's FaceTime from working for some of its users of its wireless networks. Some people at different internet service providers have been quite candid about their support for paid prioritization, which would basically make the internet a lot more like cable TV, where people would be paying higher prices to get better website packages, and this really does seem like it's going pretty much against what the internet has stood for in the past, which is that all data should be treated equally. Having said that though, there actually could be a small benefit in the repeal of net neutrality for consumers. AT&T, for instance, offers its customers free streaming of DirecTV, which it owns, and then companies like T-Mobile offer free access to sites like YouTube, which is called Zero Rating, and it was actually considered a potential conflict of net neutrality. Now, in the future, if net neutrality stays repealed, there could be some more programs like this which would come along, which would actually make certain websites free. Having said that though, it is very hard to see prices falling as a result of this net neutrality repeal. The only significant way that prices would actually end up falling is if there was more com competition in the broadband industry, which is right now dominated by only a few specific companies. Now the current chairman of the FCC has claimed that transparency is going to be the biggest reason why these companies aren't going to want to block or throttle certain websites. The FCC is still requiring companies to disclose if they're doing things like this, or if they're setting up fast lanes for internet traffic, and he's also said that people can easily switch internet service providers if they don't like what their company is doing. With that said though, a lot of people do live in a place where there's really only one significant internet service provider, so what he's basically saying is he's giving people the choice between having really bad internet or no internet at all. Now it is also possible that net neutrality could come back in the form of legislation. Even before the FCC repealed net neutrality, a number of Democrats on Capitol Hill had said they'd really like to turn Obama's net neutrality rules into law, and even Republicans have expressed support for some, some version of net neutrality, even if it's a slightly lighter version of it with slightly fewer restrictions. The reason why net neutrality was established is to prevent these companies from having so much power, and the fact that companies like Comcast and AT&T really have so much of a monopoly over the way we access our internet is already a little bit concerning. If you are concerned about net neutrality, make sure to contact your local congressman because that's going to be the way that we're going to be enacting change on this issue is if people reach out to their governing representatives and tell them they really, really do want some form of consumer protections in place. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and you were informed, and with that said, I will see you next time.